For my pour today, <coughs> excuse me, I have chosen to use Mixed Media Girl Paints with a few additions that I'll talk about along the way. I'm using Royal Purple. I'm using Electric Lime, which I have mixed with Primary Yellow to get a more yellow-green effect. Electric Purple, and I've added some white just to tone it down a little bit, make it a little more pink. Turquoise, and I've added Caribbean Teal just to make a richer turquoise color. I have gold, and then in another mix, I mixed copper with the gold, just to add a little more dimension to that gold metallic. White, which I have added, iridescent medium by Liquitex, and I also added a little bit of U.S. Art Studio Violet Iridescent Pearl, just a little bit, to see if it'll give us a little bit of shimmer and iridescence. The other color that is not Mixed Media Girl is Arteza Pearl Violet with a couple tiny squirts of the Pearl Amethyst Purple. And to that, I have added a squirt of the Royal or the Vivid Purple with Blue Interference. Again, just to see what kind of shimmer we might get. So I'm gonna put these paints aside and bring you down to our 12 by 12 canvas. This is one of the ones I love to use a lot. It has a support board. You can see that I have taped it and I've put some plastic because I don't want to get anything, any of the paints onto the back of this. I want it to be really clean. And I have my little hooks that are screwed in to elevate my canvas. So, I will bring you right back and we will start flooding the canvas and layering our paints. So now we're going to flood the canvas and I'm going to flood it with, um, the pouring medium is two parts Floetrol to one part Liquitex pouring medium and then it's two parts pouring medium with one part paint. And I'm using the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. So I've put a little bit of the copper and gold mix into the bottom. And now I'm going to layer it with the dark purple. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to separate that from the blue because I don't want to make mud or anything similar to that. We don't need a lot of that white because we really don't want that to lighten up a lot of the paints. And then we're going with the turquoise mix. And some of the regular gold 
just a little because it can take over just to separate those layers. We're going to sandwich that gold in between the two layers of color. I think we'll go with this, what I call bubblegum pink or shocking pink, but it's actually the um, electric purple that has been, white has been added. So we're going to put that in there and that can take over too. So I don't want to use a super big amount. Okay. And we're going to add a little more of the white. Just a little bit. The lime green that I made with the green and the yellow. A little more gold, just a little to separate colors. And the violet. I'm going to start over and I'm going to do the same layering. The white will go down first, so the other colors will go on top of it. And then we have that copper and gold mix for the last. I think we have enough color in the paint. I'm just going to move these back. So we can start our pour. These paints are probably about a two to three on the consistency stage uh, chart. And if you haven't seen that chart, Tammy Anderson has a link to that. I will try to remember to put that link in the description box, but it's extremely helpful. And basically, you've got little dots across the top that you put your a dab of paint, same amount in each one, and then pick it up and see how they flow down. If, they're, if they flow down evenly, you're in great shape. If one flows down faster, you can add a little bit of water to the other paints so that they flow down at the same time. And the levels go from one to... 
hmm, five or six. I don't have the chart right in front of me, but my paints were, you know, on the consistency scale, they work pretty well. All right, let's bring this back so you can have it in shot. Just adjust this a little bit. Good. And yes, we're still rolling. Okay, so we're ready to pour this down. And I think, I think I'm going to do just a straight pour on this. I've done the sparkle splat where I just throw it on, but it's a little bigger canvas and I don't want it going off the, the edge of the canvas and going everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a straight pour here and then we'll tilt a little and let the marble work around. So we're gonna start low. And I do have plenty of paint here. Plenty of paint. And we have liftoff. Not too bad. Okay. We're going to stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to torch starting to almost want to run off here. Okay, so let's start tilting. As Jeremy would say, it's tilting time. So I'm using a small marble. Sometimes if you use too big of a marble, it goes straight down to the canvas and then, you know, you're rolling on the canvas rather than the paint. So let's see, where should we start? How about in the middle? clean this off and I think I'll roll it in some white first and we'll take it up to the other corner and other side. I didn't quite get enough of that. All right, let's put that right there. Oh yeah, that's nice. Adding that white I think is good. All right, let's see what we've got here. When we stretch it, hopefully those colors will spread out a little bit, but I think I do wanna add just a little bit of white in a couple spots. Let's see if I've got some left here.
All right. Don't usually have to do this with a marble pour, but, or marble roll. However, I didn't leave quite enough negative space and we might've had a little too much paint that we had to pour off. So where'd you go, marble? There you are. Messy as you are. Let's wipe you off and get you started again. Okay, let's do this. We're gonna put it right in the center of that white one, white spot of paint. And we're going to just, I've put a little white in there, you know, on the canvas so I can bring a little more white into the painting. Now, now let's see what we have that we can, how we can stretch this. I may have stretched it out a little too much before, but let's just see. See what we can get. Not moving too much. May have to skewer that white around a little bit just to make it even. It doesn't want to really stretch very much. All right. I'm going to take a skewer and just bring I think we might need a little bit more white. The thing that's great about these mixed media or yeah, mixed media paints is that they don't have to be mixed with anything. You can pour them right out of the bottle. And if you haven't tried them, please go to Mixed Media Girls website um, or the YouTube channel and take a look at them, try them out. She has wonderful sales. Some of her paints, cause she, she mixes these all herself. And some of them are being discontinued or have been discontinued. And she's coming up with new colors all the time. So, oh, that's better. Let's just, just a little girly swirly here. I do like having a little bit of the contrast and we'll see how might be able to pour a little of that off or stretch it. Not crazy about that one corner. Definitely has purple. The gold seems to have gotten a little lost.
stretching that out a little bit. See if we can bring that down a little bit over. I may add a little gold in the center just so the gold shows up enough because those colors, like I said, are purple and gold. And right now, gold seems to have been swallowed up. Get this down to the corner there. I'm liking the stretching though. Now let's get rid of that a little bit. We definitely have a center. I'm going to take a little bit of this color and just sort of put it right on that corner, let it drip down show you what that looks like. I just put some on this on the corner here. I'm just going to let it drip down on the side and I, I can take care of it the sides and the corners to make sure everything is covered. Got some nice drippage here on the sides. corner. This corner is a little dull. And you just take some of your drippings. And I have a mirror in front of me, which allows me to see where I've missed anything. I think that will work. All right. Before I add any gold, I'm going to scrape my edges. I'm going to scrape underneath, and that is so the paint, the weight of the paint, doesn't pull down the rest of the paint. So by scraping those edges and underneath, that's why it's really helpful to have it elevated. And I do this a couple times before I'm done, because it will continue to drip. All right, I have some uh, Golden's, oops, that's not it. Golden's Iridescent Gold Fine. And it comes out in just little amounts. So I think what I'm going to do I'm going to do a little outlining of the purple, or put some dots anyway. Maybe along here. And that actually will level out. But for this one, I'm going to just take And just do a little different wrecking here. We add a little bit, a couple dots up here. Because I really want to show that there is some gold. one down here. Maybe a little 
up here. Now this is a first for me doing it this way and that's okay. That's what abstract art is all about, right? And we'll do a little dot here. So I think, I think we can call this Sparkle Done. One more dot. You know I can't resist. <laughs> okay, two more dots. Three more dots. All right. Now we can call it Sparkle Done. So, there we have it. Definitely abstract. Showing the purples. A little bit of the blue green. Violet. And I think we're good. I hope you have a wonderful day and keep your sparkle on and give it to someone you love. Bye-bye.